Okay, let's talk about polynomial multiplication. And this is going to be a quick review video on how to multiply polynomials, and we're going to keep it to these three problems. So here we have a monomial times a binomial. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And then we have a binomial times a binomial, and then a binomial times a trinomial. And uh, these are pretty uh, fairly representative of the type of problems you're going to have to deal with if you're taking any sort of algebra course, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two. So if you think you know how to do these problems, you just want to check uh, before you see uh, the solutions, go ahead and pause the video and maybe put your answers into the comment section. But I'm going to get into polynomial multiplication. Again, this is just going to be a quick review. If you need more help, I'll give you some additional suggestions as we get going into the video. But uh, anyways, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And over all those years, I've learned one thing, and that is all students can be successful in mathematics. If you're willing to work hard, what you need is great math instruction, super clear and understandable, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, definitely check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. Also, if you are preparing for any sort of test with a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe the ASVAB or teacher certification exam. I have a wide or a large library of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have great middle school and high school math courses that you might want to check out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. All right, so let's get into polynomial multiplication. Again, this is just going to be a quick review. We're going to do these three problems. But I want to focus in on is something called the distributive property. Because if you remember the distributive property and how this works, this is really the prime technique to use when you're multiplying uh, polynomials in, uh, in any uh, case. Okay, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, so let's take a look at our first problem. Here we have a monomial, right? That's a single term polynomial, and we're going to multiply it by this binomial. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to use the distributive property. So how does that work? Well, Remember the distributive property, you're going to take this term on the outside of these parentheses, you're going to multiply by whether, whatever sum or difference you have on the inside. So, by the way, this is a binomial, but this could work the same way with a trinomial or any a number of terms. So here we could take this 2x, we're going to multiply by this x. So 2x times x is what? Well, hopefully you know that that is 2x squared. Okay, so 2x times x is 2x squared, and then we're going to also distribute this 2x to this term, this 3, so 2x times this 3, or negative 3, is a negative 6x, so 2x times x minus 3 is 2x squared minus 6x. So another way we can kind of see this is 2x times x, we can write this out, 2x times this x uh, minus this 2x times this 3 right there. This is an example of the distributive property, okay? So you definitely got to know this property. It's probably one of the most important properties in algebra. But if this makes sense to you, well, then you can multiply any polynomial, okay? So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here uh, in the, uh, these next two examples. All right, so if you understand this, again, you're going to be just fine um, when, you're, when it comes to multiplying polynomials. Now, let's take a look at this problem. This is a binomial times a binomial. And the classic uh, approach to teaching how to multiply a binomial times a binomial in any uh, typical algebra course is to use a technique called FOIL. Okay. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, uh, I thought you were going to be using that distributive property. Well, hold on. Uh, we are, but uh, let's just review what FOIL stands for. So FOIL is simply an acronym. Okay. It stands for first, outer, inner, last. So let's see how this works. Okay, well, what are the first terms here? Well, this is the first term, and this is the first term of these respective binomials. So the first, this F, is when we multiply this times this. Okay, so we're going to multiply the first. So F, or I'm sorry, uh, the, the first here is X, and the first here is X. So X times X is X squared. Okay, so that's the result of uh, um, the F part of the FOIL technique. So now we go to O. So we got the first. This stands for first, outer, inner, last. So the outer, let's go over here, erase all this, because this is important. You do need to understand 
how the foil uh, technique uh, works. Uh, the outer is this times this. These are the outer terms, okay? So x times minus 2 is minus 2x. All right, so we'll get rid of that. Now, what about the i? That would be the inner, so that would be these right here. So 1 times x is x, okay? So we're going to put that term. And as you multiply, as you go through this FOIL technique, you're just simply going to write your term down, and then at the end, you're going to combine last uh, like terms. And now L is the last, and the last would be the, the last of this one and the last of this binomial. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, so here, the FOIL technique, let's just review this first, outer, inner, and then last, okay? So once you uh, multiplied all these, uh, these four um, steps here, first, outer, inner, last, you're going to go ahead and combine the remaining terms. So here, x squared, there's no x squared term, so we just have 1x squared minus 2x plus x is just a negative 1x, so that's what we have right here. And then we have a negative 2. So this is the answer right here. Okay, so most of you might be saying, well, that's pretty uh, easy. And that, yes, that's what my teacher taught me, the FOIL technique. But we're going to actually do this a different way. It is the same thing as the FOIL technique. But again, I want you to remember the distributive property, okay? Because the distributive property is such a cool property. It really comes in handy. And let me show you how to uh, think of doing this problem using the distributive property. So the way that works is you're going to take this first uh, variable. So here we have a binomial times a binomial. Take this first term, okay, in this binomial. Here it's x. Now we're going to just kind of forget about this one right here, and we're just going to go ahead and distribute this x times these two terms here. It's basically as if this problem was x times x minus 2. We're just going to forget about the 1. So we're going to say, okay, x times this x. So that's going to give us what? x squared. And then we're going to say x times this negative 2. That gives us negative 2x. So you're going to take this term right here in this binomial. You're going to multiply. And if there was a trinomial, you just keep multiplying to get all those terms listed. So once you get done multiplying this x times everything you can over here, you're going to shift. Let me show you this. Let me erase this. You're going to say, okay, I'm done with the x. So now that we're done with the x, you need to scoot over and distribute with this next term. Okay, so we've finished everything with x. So x times x and x times this negative 2. So we're going to scoot over and we're going to distribute with this 1. So that's going to be 1 times x, which is, of course, 1x right there. And then 1 times negative 2, which, of course, is negative 2. So we come up with the same uh, terms as using the FOIL technique. We're just thinking of, uh, of this differently using the distributive property. Okay, of course, we can uh, more i We'll add up all the like terms, and we end up with this, which is the correct answer. So I love the distributive property. It's just an easier way of thinking about it. Remember, the FOIL technique only applies to a binomial times a binomial. Okay. So now let's go ahead and see our last example here. And this is a binomial times a trinomial. Now, most uh, algebra courses, uh, they're going to teach you um, a technique which is usually uh, classified as like the vertical method or horizontal method. Again, both great techniques, okay? I'm going to be kind of using a version of the horizontal method of uh, doing this problem. But again, it's basically the distributive property, okay? So let me show you how this works. So we're going to basically use the same idea as we did with the previous problem. We're going to start right here with this 2y, okay, the first term, and then we're going to distribute this 2y to all these terms, let me write that a little bit better, into this trinomial, okay? So 2y times y squared is what? 2y cubed. Now, you got to be very careful here when you're doing this multiplication. So 2y times y squared, again, is 2y cubed. If you don't know why that is, you want to review basic powers and exponents. Now, this 2y times this y right there is going to be negative 2y squared, Okay, so we have a 2y cubed minus 2y squared, and then this 2y times this 3 is going to be a positive 6y. Okay, because you're going to list those terms out, and you're like, okay, I'm done multiplying with this 2y, so we'll get rid of all of this, and we'll shift over to the next term in this binomial and distribute all over again. Okay, and list all those terms out. So 5 times y squared is 5y squared 
5 times negative y is negative 5y, and then 5 times is 3 is 15. And there you go. Okay, and we have all these terms, and now the last step is to combine like terms. So let's take a look at this first term. We have 2y cubed. Is there any y cubed, uh, any more y cubed in all these terms? Nope. So we're going to write that first. You always want to write... Um, your final answer in what we call standard form that's highest to lowest power. So we're done with that. Now we have negative 2y squared right there. And I'm looking for other y squared. I see one right there. I have 5y squared. So negative 2y squared plus a five positive 5y five squared will give us a positive 3y squared. So we're done with those two terms. So we uh, now we're on to our y terms. So we have 6y negative 5y, we add those two terms up, we just get a positive 1y, or y, then we get rid of those, and that, of course, leaves us with this positive 15, and there you go. So we're just going to write that at the very end, and that is the final answer, okay? So again, when you're learning how to multiply uh, polynomials in algebra, you're going to learn these various techniques. You're going to start off with the distributive property, and then you're going to move on to the FOIL technique and then the vert vertical and horizontal method. But remember, it's all really a version of the distributive property. But if you could do these three problems successfully, you should be able to handle most other problems that you're facing in your homework, quizzes, and tests. But if you know all this stuff already and you got all this stuff right, well, I must go ahead and give you a good old little happy face and A plus and 100% for being so awesome in algebra. But again, you don't want to be overconfident. Okay, remember... Math is a skill, and you want to practice, practice, practice. Now, I was um, uh, indicating in the beginning of this video, this is a quick review, uh, and you really do need to practice with all these other techniques, like the distributive property, uh, the FOIL technique, and these other you know problems that are uh, like a trinomial times a trinomial or a binomial times a trinomial, something like this. So um, a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel you can check out in my algebra playlist. And of course, if you really, really want to learn um, this stuff, uh, you know, my best material is going to be like in any one of my algebra courses, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, pre-algebra, whatever uh, respective level you're uh, in, you know, and if you need real, you know, help with this, that's what you want to check out. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.